Media Bay is one of the most important parts of Cubase. It's a database combined with a search engine, kind of like Google for Cubase. Media Bay can be vital to your creativity in two important ways. First, if you can use Media Bay efficiently, you can find anything in a few seconds and never interrupt the creative flow. Second, Media Bay can reveal sounds, files, or settings that you may have forgotten about or haven't discovered yet, and this can help push you in new creative directions. So let's jump in. In this chapter, you'll learn how to open and navigate Media Bay, define and scan locations, search for keywords, use the attribute and logical filters, preview and insert media, and use the attribute inspector. You can call up Media Bay by pressing F5 or by using the Media menu. Now you also see Loop Browser and Sound Browser, which are other ways to open Media Bay when you're only interested in loops or sounds. And the new Mini Browser simply calls up Media Bay in a smaller window. Cubase will very often tunnel back to Media Bay during other search functions. For example, if you add a track and you select Browse, Cubase will again open Media Bay, but this time with its filters restricted to track presets only. However you choose to launch Media Bay, you'll see at least the results pane, which is the heart of the system. Now there are five other panes that control what's displayed in the results area. Click on the Window Layout tool and open all of the panes. Use the divider lines and the sizing handle to adjust how Media Bay looks. You can use the gear and keyboard icons to configure preferences and key commands without leaving Media Bay. For example, you could adjust how many results are shown. Or set up a key command to reset filters. The Define Locations pane connects Media Bay to your computer's file structure. When you define a location, you're telling Media Bay that it should look there when it searches for media files. There are three default locations all media, file system, and VST sound. The VST sound folder holds factory content like the sounds used in Loop Mesh or Groove Agent. If you have other Steinberg products like these SQL content sets, they'll be located here too. File system lets you navigate your hard drive structure. And as its name implies, all media lets you search and filter all of the media regardless of its location. Now, before Media Bay can use a location, it has to scan it. A complete system scan can take a lot of time, but you can streamline the process by removing locations that don't contain any media. Now, here's a quick troubleshooting tip. If you can't find recently installed content, like a third-party sound library, make sure that its folder is defined as a location. Once that's done, click Rescan. This will ensure that Media Bay indexes the new material. You can tell what's going on with a location by the color of the checkmark and the color of its folder. And this is often handy when troubleshooting. White checkmarks mean that the location and all of its subfolders have been successfully scanned. Orange checkmarks mean that some subfolders were omitted from scanning. And this is fine if the omitted folders don't contain any media. Red folders are actively being scanned and the light blue folders are finished. Dark blue folders were omitted, yellow or waiting, and orange folders had their scans interrupted. You define a new location with the Add function. This is useful if you want to limit your search results to a specific folder, such as a construction kit or sound effects library. For example, here's a SQL content set from Steinberg. Since the loops in each folder are designed to work together, for now I'd like to limit my results to just this folder. To do this, I'll define it as the location. Then I call it up in the Locations pane. Now any searching that I do will be limited to this location. You can use the Locations pane to select any defined location, all media, or any removable media. But as we discussed previously, if you turn Media Bay loose on a DVD, it will index all of the files and show them to you in alphabetical order. And in some cases, that can make browsing cumbersome. Use the arrow buttons to move between previous and next like a web browser, or to move up and down to the parent folder. The X button removes the selected location. This won't delete any content, it just removes that folder as a defined location. So in my example, once I'm done working with this one specific folder, I can remove it as a location so that it doesn't clutter up my locations menu in the future. The Deep Results button opens or closes subfolders within your current location. 
The results list is the heart of Media Bay. The number of results is shown in the upper right hand corner. Fortunately, you can filter and search these in many ways. Media Bay keeps track of a lot more than just audio files. You can use it to find presets, instruments, and even pattern banks. So the next step in narrowing down your results is to select the type of media that you want to display. The default setting is All Media. Click on the Media Type icon to open the selection window. Now this window is divided into three sections. Clicking the top line resets it to All Media. The next section shows recent choices, kind of like a recent documents list. And the bottom section is used to select the media types you want displayed. What you choose depends on what you're searching for. If you're looking for something specific, like a MIDI drum pattern, then limit media types to pattern banks. But if you're looking for ideas and experimenting, leave the media type and the location pane set to all media. This way, if I search for something like synth, Media Bay will offer everything in the system marked with synth, and that could include whole projects, audio files, VST presets, and sometimes experimenting with unexpected results will spark new ideas. The results pane displays a lot of information in these columns. If you want different information, use the gear icon to change the display. You can use Select None to clear the columns and start fresh. As you just saw, we can click on the magnifying glass to enter search terms. The background turns red to indicate that a text filter is active. You can also use the plus and minus signs as part of your search, just like Google. However, if the text you're looking for contains a hyphen in its name, you have to put the entire name in parentheses. Otherwise, Media Bay will exclude whatever comes after the minus sign from the search. When you're done, click the reset button. Use the previewer at the bottom of Media Bay to listen to your results. The previewer will automatically change to suit the selected media. For example, with an audio file, the previewer displays transport and volume controls. But with a MIDI file, you also get an output selector. When you select a VST preset, the previewer changes to an input device. You can also use the computer keyboard, the virtual keyboard, or an external controller. If you're using the virtual keyboard and a mouse, you can click and hold until the pointer becomes a crosshair. Then you can drag to preview pitch bend and modulation effects. There's also a memo recorder. This allows you to make a quick loop to help audition different sounds. One note, the previewer function in Media Bay is disabled if you have the control room turned on. Now when you select a pattern bank, the previewer will display controls similar to Beat Designer. If I insert a pattern bank, Cubase will automatically set up Groove Agent and Beat Designer and load them both with the correct sounds and patterns. And as you're previewing, don't forget to use the rating slider to mark your favorites. Once you've located the file you want, you can add it to your project. You can double click it, or you can right click and use the context menu. If you double click a VST instrument sound, Cubase will automatically create a new instrument track with that instrument and sound already loaded. If you double click on a track preset, it'll be applied to whatever track you've selected in the project. Now that you have a basic idea, let's look at the filters pane. You have two types of filtering, attribute or logical. And these are the most powerful tools for searching in Media Bay. The attribute mode provides a series of columns and you work from left to right refining your selection. And you can adjust your choice of attributes by using the drop down on each column heading. For example, if I want to filter by frame rate as my first attribute, I can reset the first column to display frame rate. If I also want to filter by uh, author, I can change the second column to display that information and so forth. Now, keep in mind that your filters are affected by the location and media type settings as well. So if you're getting unexpected results, or more likely no results, double check the location and media type. The logical mode is a sophisticated text search. 
begin by selecting an attribute. And an easy example is name. Then select a logical operator like equals, and then type in the value. Let's use drums. Now, click the little plus sign at the end of the third column, and you'll add another row of filters. Now here's a handy trick. If you find something that you really like and you want to find similar stuff, you can run a context search. Right click on the selected file, hover down the search for submenu, Media Bay will show you a list of every known attribute for that file. Now select the attribute that you're interested in and the results pane now shows all the files that have that same criteria. Notice that the logical filter now displays our context search. To return, use the Go Back button in the Filters pane. You can always click the Reset button to clear everything and start over. Now the last pane is the Attribute Inspector. Attributes are also referred to as tags. When you select a file in the Results pane, the Attributes Inspector displays everything that Media Bay knows about that file. The Dynamic view shows you attributes already associated with the file. The defined view allows you to choose which attributes are displayed. White and yellow items can be changed, red and orange cannot. Yellow just means that multiple files are selected with different values. Usually you edit a value by double clicking, but some use drop downs or context menus. You can tag any number of selected files at the same time. You configure the attribute inspector by clicking on the gear icon. You can also use the results pane to manage files. This allows you to use MediaBay's considerable search and filter capabilities to assist in organizing your media. For example, say you have drum samples scattered over several folders and you want to consolidate them into one drums folder. One approach would be to define a new location called drums, then use MediaBay to find all of your drum files, then click and drag them to the new location. Let's move on to the next chapter and we'll look at the standard plugins.